Hello and good morning and good afternoon guys and welcome to our uh, uh, chapter 8, middle 8 of our uh, subject 83. And our topic for this afternoon is about research hypothesis. So first things first, our objectives are as follows. Number one, discuss research hypothesis. Number two, value the importance of research hypothesis. And number three, understand research hypothesis. To give you an idea of what is a research hypothesis, um, a hypothesis is proposed explanation for a phenomenon. So for a hypothesis to be scientific hypothesis, the scientific method requires one to test it. And scientists generally make scientific hypothesis on reviews observations that are not satisfactorily with available scientific theories. And even though the words hypothesis and theory are often used synonymously, a scientific hypothesis is not the same as scientific theory. So we have the uses of hypothesis. So this one is any useful hypothesis with predictions by reasoning. Including the so I might predict the outcome of an experiment in a laboratory setting or the observation of the phenomenon in nature. The prediction may also involve statistics that only talk about probabilities. So for hypothesis test. Uh, hypothesis as an added information, we have a scientific testable prediction and it describes in concrete terms what you expect will happen in the certain circumstances. So why do we use hypothesis generating interviews? First is to obtain initial clues on possible sources of exposure. Second is to develop hypothesis as questionnaires. And number three, to identify signs and symptoms um, of theories and variables. Let's go to scientific hypothesis. So for scientific hypothesis, uh, we refer to trial solution of problem hypothesis, no? and then often called an educated guess. So because it's a suggested outcome based on evidence, uh, it means that uh, educated guess is not just a guess, but uh, a smart guess, wherein you'll be able to uh, predict some outcomes based on the current um, scientific explanation or terms that you observe and valued. So experiments may test and reject several hypotheses before solving the problem. And according to Schick and Vaughan, researchers weight up alternative hypothesis may take into consideration. So before we dive into working hypothesis, guys, uh, this one, uh, there are actually five kinds of scientific hypothesis. So this, this, these are the considerations for scientific hypothesis. Number one is stability. For stability, this compares falsibility, viability as discussed above. And then number two is parsimony. This is in the application of discouraging the postulation of excessive numbers of entities, the scope wherein this is the apparent application of the hypothesis to multiple cases of phenomenon. Number four is fruitlessness. This is the prospect that the hypothesis may explain further phenomena in the future. And number five, conservatism, wherein there is a degree of fit with existing recognized knowledge systems. For working hypothesis, uh, this refers to the work um, provisionally accepted as basis for further research in the home. A tangible theory will be produced even if the hypothesis ultimately fails. So like all hypothesis, a working hypothesis is constructed as a statement of expectations, which can be linked to the exploratory issues for post and empirical investigation. 
So when you speak about working hypothesis, these are often used as the conceptual framework no? in qualitative research. So there is the provisional nature of working hypothesis, which makes them full, uh, useful as an organization and organizing device in applied research. Now for the um, bulk of the discussion for hypothesis, we're in, we only concentrated with the two kinds of hypothesis, guys. No? These are the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So we have first the for the hypothesis, uh, what we're going to do. Okay, so there, uh, another hypothesis is simply a statement which you're going to say, and then you are expected no difference in the outcome between groups that is no relationship existing between the given variable in your hypothesis. So your null hypothesis proceeded with a simple HO. And whereas your alternative hypothesis, which is preceded by the uh, by the symbol HA, is one that implies the difference in particular direction when one compares two groups or group of different points in time. So in short, it's the opposite of your null hypothesis. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Uh, how are you going to write your uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis? I think there's um guys there is a um um some call in your modules. Okay, let's I will stop the presentation first. Okay, um let me present my entire screen. So for the delay, no? Okay, see you guys. Um, okay, I'm sorry about this because I'm here. I'm conducting last year in school, and they are um, currently uh, undergoing the uh, road lightning on the school, no? So I'm very sorry. Let's, um, let's go to our example. You can see here on the title of the study, Manang Palamansas Store Inventory System. The um, hypothesis uh, is preceded by HO. You can see here. So it says there is no significant difference in the implementation of the inventory system at Manang Palamansas Store in terms of its usefulness and functionality. So whereas we're going to write your alternative hypothesis, so it is preceded by the same page, and it says there is a significant difference to the implementation of an inventory system in terms of usefulness and functionality. It's the third. Our activity number 11 is called the hypothesis testing. You are going to refer to your hypothesis versus the hypothesis. What you're going to do is to write your title, uh, HO and HA. So you will use any online and offline software provided it will be copy pasted to any word processor. Convert it to PDF and save it at activity 11. Upload it in our Google Classroom. Okay, so basically, guys, what you're going to do is you're going to refer to null alternative hypothesis, and you're going to pattern your uh, uh, hypothesis testing. But before that, you're going to write your title. Then you're going to write your HO, which is your null hypothesis, and you're going to write also your HA, your alternative hypothesis. Okay, so that is our activity. Okay. 
okay. for the for the code of the day, code of the day uh, states that uh, what is the symbol for numbers? And uh, lastly, uh, it means true knowledge. So thank you very much, guys, for attending our class this afternoon. So, do you have any questions regarding our uh, um, activity? Again, I'm sorry about the <laughs> the, the the noise background because uh, we are I am I am here conducting our class here at school, no. So okay, so do you have any questions about our activity for this week? Okay, so you are going to write your uh, hypothesis. Uh, in such a way that um, you are going to present it uh, with your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. But before that, what you're going to do is to write your title first, and then HO, and then HA. So please uh, do that um, with your activity with your classmates, no? with your group. And then um, uh, you're, going to, you're just going to refer that to your module. So there is a sample there in your module that you can actually turn your hypothesis. And by the way, guys, hypothesis is used to uh, be, uh, formulate the, uh, uh, the direction of uh, how are you going your study to be uh, developed, no? or how, how are you going to study. So basically, uh, even though our um, study is technological developmental type of study. Um, hypothesis testing is, is um, being put there uh, after at a, or sometime um, on chapter one of your study. Uh, but I think it, uh, it, I don't know if they are going to write it, pa, but uh, actually it was ex uh, eclipse with your uh, conceptual framework. So your hypothesis testing is not, um, related to your guys' conceptual framework or sa kung ka mong, uh, no, theoretical framework. Again. Pero after your theoretical framework was, ano, was converted into, into your prior R chapter 2. No? So if you're still confused on how are we going to uh, make your hypothesis testing, you just read your conceptual framework and at the same time, um, your prior art. So basically, hypothesis testing is just a um, few statements which put a direction to your study. You know? So hypothesis testing is also being done. Uh, to formulate and uh, to put your observation into perspective. So basically, guys, uh, uh, in any kind of uh, study, especially in capstone, uh, you may find different techniques on how are you uh, uh, on how are you going to make your uh, or you're going to conduct your study. And one of that method is called observation. However, observation alone cannot make a an a research study. So how are you going to make your observation being um, mostly weighted with your study? You're going to convert it into um, into um, uh, convert it into a conceptual framework. So, but before you can conduct or make create your conceptual framework, uh, you must ask yourself uh, how are you going to do that. So by doing that. Uh, you must have a hypothesis or what we call your educated guess. So, it's a lot guys, educated guess, but uh, before you can come up with an educated guess, you must first think of the variables of the necessary um, things of your study that you can provide, that is provided, no? So, just like, ano ba guys, magdaha, amo, magluto, amo, 
uh, hindi ka mo pwede ka uh, hindi ka mo pwede ka daha kung matakot so to create a, a dish out of ingredients uh, you must uh, mix ingredients or heated it or it must undergo a certain process or a certain um, before you can go on or you can uh, have the final product no so in our case when you're do conducting a research you must have a basis or a point of action that you're going to take before you can make a conclusion so by position it's not uh, you must transform your observation into something credible and the credibility one credible aspect of conducting study you must have a hypothesis at least a hypothesis so that you must have a basis or a point of action that you can take so that is why hypothesis is must um, must be taken uh, a good point when you are going to conduct a research study Okay, so I think the explanation, siguro, no, that is the explanation for uh, hypothesis testing and conducting or writing hypothesis. So, sa pagduro do na type hypothesis, you you we will just be con um, concentrating on our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. So, your null hypothesis is um, represented by H uh, H O. That is a symbolism for null hypothesis. And that is usually a statement. You can create your null hypothesis um, in such a way that um, you can start your entitled title because that will be your basis. No? And then the alternative hypothesis is just uh, writing it in a direct form. So, kung man notice ninyo, the first statements of your null hypothesis there is no significant difference so because um, when you're going to test it you must conduct it with statistics no so if you're going to write it that way uh, you'll be able to use um, um, credible statistics no and um, depending on the type of study you know. but in our case of developmental guys uh, we use minimal um, minimal uh, aspects of statistics uh, just because uh, may primarily our, our, the, the method that we're going to undertake will be uh, developmental first which is develop common system you know, and then the other one will be technological in the sense that um, you'll be validated your study will be validated by, by a group of experts at the same time by the organization or the people that you are going to uh, create a system for Pakananda. So the mindset for this is basically you're creating a system out of um, uh, some research outputs that you are going to research from the person or the organization that you're going to have. So again, um, how are you going to write your um, uh, activity? Uh, it's basically you write it first, your title, and then you write your HO, and then fa be followed by your H. So that's it. Okay, so uh, by the way, guys, before we end our discussion for this afternoon, I would just like to make mention of some of your activity because I have... Um, when you're going to, you, uh, how are you going to uh, get your comments, no? Sa, ano nyo, you, you, you go to your Google Classroom, and then sa activity nyo ginpasa nyo kanakon, there's a comment there. Pag itaalan nyo sa space nyo gin-attach nyo bala. And then you can see there the comments nyo gin, ano, some, some of that, uh, some of the revisions nyo, ano, ng comments ng RPL. So please consider it, no? The comments. So, why ko siya ginbutang ng comments sa inyong uh, ang comment section sa may uh, ano ka classroom, ang feedback bala. So, ang comment ninyo, ito yata na makita sa inyong uh, page mismo, sa activity ninyo, get. 
So what they're going to do is to click the activity. Uh, kung hindi nyo makita, I think um, ang pinaka ano ko lang uh, yung buton ng comments are yung last yung uh, kay pagbasa nyo ka activity is alphabetical abi mo. So ang natabo ang um, um, sa mga classmates ninyo ang um, um, ng mga first bala ng mga apelyado ang um, sa una diyan daw kaya comment na anyway so sa mga isa ka group ninyo guys i think uh ya comment ko na po tanto ya dala do daya below ng group ninyo so kay pareho mang abi ang activity nga ginawa niyo okay? by the ba you're creating your activity by group and then submitting your uh, activity by individual so please uh, the comment applies to everybody so it means nga, uh, whenever i commented it in one of your group members kung pareho inyo nga study or ang um, title nga study ninyo so it means na darado da ka ang tanan ninyo group anyway and uh, i uh, my identify command you know ang group na nagkanda pareho ka lang nga uh, title ninyo ang makada so next week will be our ano uh, will be our midterm exam and it is late at 11 uh, at on November 11 and November 12 so i think we we'll, we're going to just set the midterm ninyo to na guys um ang tabo is sa subject naton nga dia um uh, you're going to defend your titles no so by defending your titles, you have to write at least uh, five titles. Then we are going to um, to present it. So I will just uh, make the criteria for the presentation, and the dollars for that will be uh, within this week lang. So make make class time, and we will have, we'll have a class tomorrow evening. Pa, I think I will create lang ang pagkakulang. Please, ang obrahan niyo lang is to prepare uh, five titles. We're going to add that five titles after our, our your presentation or your defense. Ako lang anay ang magrate to add ng term. Ang criteria ay present ko lang sa ninyo. Um, pero ang sa final na ito, we're going to present chapters 1, 2, 3 already. So please prepare sa final exam. That will be your final exam. To your midterm, I will create pa the criteria for, uh, for that. And then I will post so that may come down come on guys so yeah assignment in your besides assignment new for this week um so next week i will not give you um i will not uh, have a class na next week and my exam naman pero within this week pa kaya lang ninyo ipasa pa activity nito okay so, kinanglan nyo pa ipasa yung activity ninyo, pero next week I will not um, conduct a class anymore and uh, because, just because nga exam natin. So, we will, uh, kahit duwan man yung schedule natin, we will try to, ano lang. Um, and then you you have an option also to present na, ano, kung gusto nyo mauna or, uh, ano, I think, but to be fair, i-dollat na siguro ng third group. So, uh, think, um, think of five titles that you can uh, just write it on. Maybe you can present it sa PowerPoint, siguro, no? And then, para nga ma critic na to, you're going to present it sa, ano na to, sa Google Meet. So, that will be next week, man. I will check your progress from time to time. Um, please ask questions again uh, regarding your presentation next week sa ano natin sa um, ayun sa group or sa IM. So I will be checking extensively the my FB account for this week okay, and because I know that you're going to inquire um, uh, uh, some, some of the I don't know necessary questions about your um, presentation so what you're going to do is to convene within your group guys and you are going to formulate your titles uh, i'm assuming that um title supposedly you're going to rank it by 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, in which ang number five ang and ang number pinaka important niyo will be your number one nga title. And ang number one nga title, guys, ang I hope I'm hoping also that ang the ang title nga ginapasa niyo don sa mga activities natin bala. So so that uh, I para next year you um uh, that is in preparation for next year if uh, your other teacher will um all or not so it's much better on uh, on another uh, formulate to come as soon as possible so that uh hindi to come mabudlay yan magsulat ka papel ninyo or capital uh, ninyo next year okay so you have any questions guys more of the um no siguro will be announced next meeting or tomorrow evening no? we still have a class for I, for this subject so uh, just pm me or uh, ask questions regarding our activity huh? and at the same time your uh, presentation for this group okay sige uh, some more inquiry or questions guys Okay, uh, I'm hoping that uh, some of your classmates can actually uh, see our lecture for this um, subject um, so that they will be informed of our activity for this week and also the things that we need to do next week. No? All right, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to upload this to your FB page later on. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for attending your class this afternoon. And... Um, uh, I'll see you um, tomorrow. Sige. Okay. I, I'm hoping sa um, ano ninyo, uh, other subjects, ITP 3 uh, na-post ko ng video on how to do your activity. No? So, hindi man to doon maubra doon. Sige guys, salamat din sa pag-attend ka klase nyo and good afternoon lang din sa atin. Sige, bye-bye. Thank you.